he would have bitten us, as they say. I'm busy looking around, but he's right here doing what he does best, which is looking ever so elegant in the late afternoon light. So he's just on the dam wall itself, and we thought he might come towards Twin Dams today when we were following him, and sure enough, there he lies on the dam wall. So I think this is the first time in the Wild Earth history that we've had leopard on both sides of the world. So one in the Mara and one on the side, which is a very, very, very good way to spend a day. I certainly love the fact that we have leopards on both sides and it is beautiful to see Osana. Look at how regal he's looking. He looks like a proper male leopard now up on his dam wall, doesn't he? It's been such a treat actually to spend so much time with this little guy over the last few days. He's really spoilt us. So Izzy, as I was saying, we, we were saying that Hosanna spoilt us, but you say you feel so spoilt to have seen him and the leopard in the Mara. And not only that, but I mean, we've just had an incredible week, or well, last few days. We've had cheetah and lions and leopards, and it's just been insane. We've had pretty much all our vehicles seeing cats regularly, which is a phenomenal thing. So it really is nice that we have a situation that we're seeing so many cats at the moment it is that time of the year this is the best time it's silly season basically for all the animals as we get to the drier parts in the sabi sands at least and i suppose up in in the kenya with the migration it really is silly season on both sides for animals and that's why we're getting so many beautiful sightings of all of our predators at the moment but doesn't he just look fantastic in this light i mean it's kind of that gold sunset light and he's just sitting on the dam wall he really is a spectacular individual completely unperturbed as well. I mean, there's a car parked pretty much above him and he's not worried at all. It's amazing how relaxed he actually is. And yesterday morning he proved that when he was sitting behind Seb for so long. So, Ali, you want to know if we can tell by a leopard's track or paw print if they are injured. Ali, yes, you can. So you can tell by the way that a leopard will move and particularly in the say shadows case so you could see that she was only having one front foot and then both her back legs would walk and she wouldn't put foot uh, her right front down at all so there was no right front foot track at all and then the other side of it is if now that she's limping she'll drag that right foot slightly so you'll see a slight sort of line and a slight drag mark on that as she kind of limps forward so it, it is quite visible fairly regularly to see that kind of thing it's not something that you you don't see um, as soon as there's a limp you can notice it quite quickly on a, any of the cats actually I'm just thinking Seb do you not think around the other side might be better Side, on, on, the, on the other side, side yeah although I suppose we are right where we are now it's perfectly fine yeah I think he might wake up at some point he's watching the terrapins in the water he's also above where we used to have the monitor lizards going regularly into their sort of cave and so I wonder if he's not just spotted some of those as we know even though he's got a full belly from this morning it's still hungry and still hunting because he was stalking all kinds of things this morning. No, I think she's just watching the terrapins in the other car that's just arrived at this stage. But look how beautiful he looks. Still got a little round belly as well. It's amazing though how fast they digest. You wouldn't think that he's eaten an impala and a steenbok in the last two days. Doesn't look as though he's that full. So often when we see them, and, and, and a lot of people always comment that he looks quite skinny and that he's, or a leopard looks skinny, it just shows you how quickly they can actually digest food. He was eating this morning at the end of the day and last night, and yet he looks as though he could easily eat again. So they do digest their meat very quickly. But he's got a very serious stare these days, does Hosanna. When he opens his eyes and that bright orange kind of stares at you, He's got a very serious look. His, that cub look is going quicker and quicker as he's getting older. Kathy, you're 
asking how will Hasana find his own territory. Well, Kathy, this is not so much that he will find his own one, but basically how the process will work is that one of the bigger males is theoretically going to push him out of his natal territory, so Tingana or Quarantine or Anderson, one of those three, depending on who ends up around here when he starts to push for dominance and he starts to get big enough and strong enough to push for dominance. They'll sort of push him out of here. He'll then become nomadic and he's going to cross through territories of other leopards where he's going to try and find an area and, and find a, a calm space where there's not scent marking, where there's not um, a lot of noise of, of leopards calling at night and try to forge that territory. If that doesn't happen and he gets bigger and stronger and he, and he finds a leopard that is older and weaker and he thinks that he can challenge them, then he will go about going after that leopard and then stealing that territory from that particular individual so it just depends on kind of how it works but most of the young leopards kind of move around as nomadic individuals for a while and then they find themselves a small little space and they get big enough then to try and stand their ground and, and form a divide between them and a territorial male that's on the edge or they oust the territorial male from that particular area and take over but that's still a long time for Hasana as much as he's a beautiful boy and he's getting bigger He's got a long, long way to go before he becomes a territorial individual. It was yesterday when we saw Tingana, we realized very quickly how he's got a lot of growing to do before he's going to be anywhere near the size he needs to be to go after any of these big males and, and oust them out of their territory. You can see the little tail again flickering and twitching as he watches the terrapins. It always happens with the leopards when they see things. Also, there's a few doves walking around. Sinak, you're wondering if leopards hunt at night and then hang their prey in trees. Well, so leopards won't only hunt at night. They're very opportunistic animals. They'll hunt at any time of the day. As soon as an opportunity presents itself, they will take it and so you'll find the situation if he spots something like a diker like he did this morning he was stalking it and trying his best to um, grab it so they'll hunt at any time but in terms of putting their food in trees not always sometimes they do please excuse some of the people around here with the revving of the car I don't know why they're doing it but anyway um, so sometimes they will put things in trees, sometimes they don't. It depends on the size of the kill. If it's something too big for him that he's unable to cope with and unable to actually lift into the tree, then no, it will be down on the ground and he'll try and feed off it and lighten it and take it up and hope that hyenas don't find it. But generally, they're going to try and put it up into a tree as soon as possible so that they don't have to worry about scavengers like hyena or lions particularly or even things like... Um, other leopards that could potentially find them, although other leopards will be able to climb and steal it away. So it's more for hyenas than anything else, though. But we know, like, Shadow very seldom actually puts her car carcasses up into a tree. He seems to have a good habit and does it all the time, but Shadow not so much. And we know that also Tandi sometimes leaves hers on the ground. Um, Saleesh used to leave hers often on the ground as well, and then every now and then she would take things up. Tiani seems to take hers up a lot. So it depends on the character. Some do it more than others. He's loving these doves that are flying around the edge of the water. They're completely besotted with them. Seb, so I'm going to go around the other side and just because I want to try and see if we can get a different angle quickly. Since he's watching the doves, I want to see... Oh, come on, Rusty. You have to go into reverse because I can't go forward. So Rusty has this thing where it doesn't want to go into reverse sometimes and you have to go into first gear and roll slightly. But with the way of the lay of the land that we're at at the moment, we can't really go forward. So it would have been a bit of a disaster had we had to do that. There we go. 